folks, welcome to another edition here of Krantz's Corner. It's Jets Week. Uh, I love talking to my friend here, Antoine Staley here. He's from the, he's the beat writer and columnist for the New York Daily News, covers the Jets, been talking to him for years, friends for years. But Antoine, it's weird because you know that the Dolphins week is down here during Jets Week. We're back in the day when we were both covering that locker room. Um, it's a hate week. Now it's just, nah, it's a blah week. So first off, welcome back to Krantz's Corner and welcome to Blah Jets Week this week. Well, well, I guess if you're the Dolphins, like you get to eliminate the Jets again from playoff contention. So that that's your uh, that's your saving grace, at least. Like, like that's what happened last year when they beat them thirty to nothing. So right. I assume the Jets, I mean, the Dolphins will be motivated to do that again. Right. I mean, they're still partially in it, so you know they're going to need some wins. So playing the Jets and hopefully getting a win here and there is going to be good. They play the Jets twice in the next couple of weeks, so that's good there. But let's start with your with your guys, the Jets there. Um, the Aaron Rodgers situation to me is hilarious because I don't know if he wants, it's not right. I don't know if he wants to play. I don't know if they want him to play. I don't know if he's in the plans for next year. I don't know if he knows if he's in the plan. This is unbelievable. How do you cover this situation outside of just laughing in the background a little bit? Man, I, I, I covered some really bad dolphin scenes when I was yes. there, as you know, uh, this pales in that pale in comparison to what I'm covering the like last two years. It's particular this year. It, it's been a soap opera consistently, and then on top of it, it's been a lot of bad football too as well. And yeah, I think Aaron is. I think he's come to the realization at the at this point in his career, like this this could be it. Like right. this could be this could be really it for him. Uh, you got five games left in his career, maybe. Uh, he's not playing well. I think he knows he's not playing well and, you know, possibly, you know, maybe he wants to go play somewhere else, but I can't see him just being a backup somewhere. Uh, I think he's going to want to start. And I think once he realizes that it may not, he may not have a starting opportunity that available, then, you know, I definitely think he's going to possibly retire, but yeah, I don't see any situation. I instance the jets bring him back. They're going to have a new general manager. Right. They're going to have a new coach. Uh, I don't think any GM or coach wants to deal with a 42, a soon to be 42 year old Aaron Rodgers next year that comes with a lot of baggage as well. And it's not playing like up to his MVP standards. So yeah, I don't see any scenario where he returns there. I think the Jets start over. They're going to rebuild. They do have a lot of young talent and guys like Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. But uh, yeah, I think they're going to completely like kind of start this thing fresh. You think Garrett Wilson's happy with the Devontae Adams trade? No. Okay, good. Because well, well, I'm a well, fantasy owner. He, I'm not. So there it is. Well, let me let me rephrase it. I don't think he's happy about the situation. I think he, right. lo- he right. loves Adams, actually. Uh, and those two have kind of got to know each other really well. But, I mean, he's we're talking about a guy that's, you know, every single level he won. High school he won. Um, playing high school football in Texas. Ohio State obviously won a lot there. The Jets haven't been so much. He called last year the worst year of his life. Uh, I, I don't know what he if he thought last year was the worst year. Is like I can't even imagine what he thinks about this year. Right. I mean, we tried to ask him after the loss against Seattle. He ended up leaving the locker room before uh, reporters even got in there. Uh, I think that's you know just a tale of what's going on right now. And even Devontae Adams also left the locker room too. I think people are stunned how bad they are. I picked them to I picked them to miss the playoffs, but I didn't think they'd be this bad. I mean, right. this is. Again, this is the worst team. Like by the time the year ends, this will probably be the worst team that I've ever covered record wise. And yeah. you look at the name, you look at the names on the team. It, right. it shouldn't be like that. Although I think you know, and I've said this numerous times, the Jets are a group of individuals. They're not a team, and I think you, I think you see that on a consistent basis. And firing Robert Sala was clearly the wrong move. Right. It, it, it didn't look like it didn't seem like the right move at the time. Uh, it now definitely doesn't look like the right move. You should have waited the season to see how it all planned out. And then maybe, right. to be honest, maybe Salah keeps the job. Even though maybe, they have yeah. a, let, let's say they go three and 14. Let's say they finish like that with the Aaron Rodgers situation and everything. Maybe there's a, a chance at the end of the season that he can convince the, the owner to keep. But if you get rid of Joe Douglas, too, there's just no shot. I thought that yeah. right when the GM was gone, you figured it's a, a full clean house. Weird that it happened kind of kind of backwards they fired the coach and then the gm instead of the gm and then the coach but you know what that's woody johnson for you anyway right i think they did that because joe douglas in the last year of his deal anyway so at that point you're gonna have to pay him anyway 
I don't think they necessarily wanted to fire him, but right. uh, during the bye week, they were probably like, we might as well just go ahead and get rid of him because they had stripped him from his power anyway. Woody really, really, after he fired Robert Sala, he facilitated the Devontae Adams trade. I mean, it was also the Hassan Reddit situation. Woody uh, facilitated that. So Joe Douglas was not involved in a lot of these moves. Like, and he was also not involved in firing, you know, Robert Sala. He didn't right. even he, he didn't even get asked his opinion about the situation. So you get you look at all those situations, like all, everything that happened with that, then you basically have a lame duck general manager anyway. He just basically showed up to the office not doing anything anyway. Right. Uh, so yeah, I guess at that point you just go ahead and move on and, it, and just pay him for the next you know six weeks or so. Right. Get it. Get it over with. Let him not even worry about it at that point. Yeah. Such a, such a crazy situation going on. I want to go back to the prediction people in the beginning of the year that the sexy pick was the Jets in the Super Bowl. Like, I want to go back to those and ask every one of them again, including Greenberg and all those guys. I get their Jets fans too. So, of course, you get Aaron Rodgers. You're feeling pumped about your team. I'm getting Aaron Rodgers for a full season now instead of four plays like last year. So you're feeling confident. You make some big trade, you know, big trade for Devonta Adams. Hassan Reddick comes in. Maybe he could be the guy. I just, man, you're right. We've seen a lot of dumpster fires in our days covering teams. This has got to be right up there, if not, if not the biggest one I've seen also. And it's crazy that as a Dolphins fan, as someone who covers the Dolphins, it's happening in the division, not happening in the NFC West or in the South somewhere, somewhere. It's just, it's right here. And for a team that had expectations outside of yours, I think a lot of expectations around the country or nationally were, yeah, this is the Jets year. They're going to get it together and they're going to be a playoff team, maybe even a Super Bowl contender. I can't believe where they are now compared to that. I can't either. I, I had them barely missed the play. I had the Dol- I had the Bills and Dolphins making the playoffs and finishing sure. above them. I had them in third place, but I had the Jets with like nine wins. But I thought they would just barely miss the playoffs. I never thought in a million years they would be this bad. But I did have – my questions were coaching. Like you had Robert Sala coming back. I mean, essentially last year he could have been fired, but they right. gave him a mulligan because Aaron got, got hurt. Okay, that was a big question. Aaron Rodgers, 40, going on 41, coming off an Achilles injury. That was a big concern to me, too. Nobody knew how he was going to be. Uh, people thought automatically he was going to be really good. But, you know, I think we kind of saw – we ignored the signs his last year in Green Bay. He started declining then, too. Right. If you think about it, like he ended up throwing, I believe, 13 or 14 interceptions – and the Packers were ready to move on. Obviously, they had Jordan Love waiting. And we thought, okay, he had some injuries there. The Green Bay situation wasn't really good. He had young receivers. But come to find out, I think that was the start of the decline there for Aaron Rodgers, too. And then not, not only that, when you, when, you fire, you know, when you fire a coach during the season, they typically – in the NFL, they typically don't work out. You see it in other sports like NBA, NHL, baseball, because they have so many games that eventually, like, you can, you know, climb out of a big hole. In NFL, when you get – I mean, they, the Jets were two and three at the time when Robert Sala was fired. Right. They won one game since then. And then now you're asking Jeff Albrecht, who – nice guy. I love Jeff. I think he's a really good, good guy. I think he's a great defensive coordinator. But you're asking somebody who's never had head coaching experience to now be the CEO of your football team while right. at the same time also still being defensive coordinator. That's a very hard thing to do, especially in the NFL. You see it in college where they can do it. But this is the NFL. I think you need to divert some of that, you know, responsibility to somebody else too. And it's hard to do be both an offensive or defensive coordinator while also being a head coach because right. I think there's certain people that have been able to do it, but it's very hard to, you know, get winning results that way. What are the biggest positives you're taking from this season so far with three and nine record? Like, what are the? <laughs> I mean, cause, I mean, there are there has to be some. Like you said, there's going to be young yes. talent that's on this team going forward, and that's going to be the core of your team. Who are those guys? We know it's Sauce Gardner. Uh, you know, I know the Garrett. Johnson's hurt. Yeah, like, like, yeah. what are the biggest positives for you right now going into, and I can't believe we're doing this already, into the next season in 25? Well, I've already started talking draft, so that's kind of <laughs> where I am right now. Oh, I like, see Twitter all over percent. you. I see the Jets' Twitter yeah. all over you for it. Right. Yeah, right. So, uh, so basically, like, I think a guy, guy like Garrett Wilson's had a really good year there. I think he's turned emerging to like a top 10 to 15 receiver in the league. So I think that's a positive there. A goal, guy like Olu Fashionu, who, you know, they drafted uh, 11th overall in the draft, ended up replacing Tyron Smith, who's on injured reserve. I think he's playing well. So right. you got a good young left tackle for the future there. That's going to be under contract for about four years, I think. So I think you could take that positive away. A guy like, you know, Jamie and Sherwood, really good linebacker. Him and Quincy Williams have been playing really well. So I definitely think 
Uh, that's a positive there, even though the Jets defense, I think it's suffered since Jeff Albrick has taken over there. They were top five mm-hmm. unit. And then now they're barely hanging on to like a top 10, you know, ranking uh, right now. And they're giving up over 27 points per game. Right. Uh, like since uh, Sala has been fired. So uh, the defense hasn't been good, but you have some pieces there. Like guy like Quentin Williams, still one of the best deep right. tackles in football there. I think DJ Reed's playing at a high level, but he'll be a free agent after the season. So I don't imagine he'll come back. So you, you're you not totally bare if you're the Jets, too. You just need to, you know, obviously fortify the quarterback position, but also, uh, you know, get, gain some other talent in some other key areas, too. You drafted a quarterback if you're a top five. If one of those, because, I mean, one, two, it's going to be probably Shador, Cam Ward. Is there anyone else after that or, or one of those two guys your guy? Or do you think this Jets team might need – another veteran to come in here and play. I love Cam Ward. I think he's the top quarterback, but I imagine he's either going to go to the Giants or Raiders. And then right. whoever, whoever doesn't get Ward or sent or like vice versa, then they'll get, they'll draft the other one. I, I don't think the, I think the Jets could be bad enough to be in that position, but I think they might beat Jacksonville. So if they beat Jacksonville, right. then that they're definitely out of the race for quarterbacks. So I think in that instance, you just take the best available player and they need, I think you can justify them taking just about every single position outside of maybe running back and then center. But yeah, they definitely could use some defensive help there. Uh, if you want to talk about another wide receiver, because I don't think Alan Lazar is going to be there next year either. Uh, and also Devontae Adams, like he has a, he, he's under contract, but he would be scheduled to make $35 million mm-hmm. with no guaranteed money. So, and if Aaron's not going to be there, I can't yeah. imagine Devontae wanting to stick around considering he he been he was with the Raiders in a bad situation. He's even in a worse situation <laughs> with the Jets now. Go so ahead. I would I, I would think he want to compete for a championship as his career starts to wind down. So uh yeah, I can't I can't see them taking a the quarterback if Ward and Sanders aren't there. So I think you just, you know, maybe you take a guy, you know, second or third round, you know, maybe a guy like a Drew Aller for Penn State or Garrett Nussmeyer there, but yeah, you definitely don't want to reach for a quarterback because, as we've seen, they, those typically don't work out. Although, I will say this with the Broncos, with Bo Nix, I, I thought they reached. Love him. Right. He has been tremendous. Right. <laughs> like, he threw a ball yesterday that was just oh. on a dot. So, like, yeah, he has been – I got that wrong. I put, <laughs> I got that wrong, and I think a lot of people did too. Right. A, a lot of people who drafted before that they got that wrong as well and needed a quarterback. So, there you go there. Uh, all right, last one, I'll let you go. Um, your thoughts just on the Dolphins, uh, what's happened so far with them five and seven on the year, obviously a bad loss last week. They've had two last second losses to the bills and the Cardinals since Tua came back fighting for the playoff spot. And they're in that spot that we always love to see in the hunt at the end of the playoff (laughs) run, but your thoughts on what's going on with this team right now, Chris Greer, Mike McDaniel, two of the team. What have you seen from an outside, uh, an outsider looking in? Oh man, I I'm so used to the end the hut when I was covering the Dolphins. Like that's all they were in, like in the right. hut, like until like the end of December. But uh, I think the team just likes a certain level of physicality. Like that's what you want to see from a team like this. I mean, it's okay. I mean, you lose the Green Bay, that's fine. But I feel like they just wasn't even competitive. Like it just you need a certain, especially when you go in these cold weather places like Kansas City, like Green Bay, and and like the Jets, like the last game of the season, even to a extent. Although the Jets are a bad football team. You need a certain level of physicality to win those type of games. And I just feel like that's very, at least from the outside and just talking with, obviously I still know all the beat writers that cover the Dolphins there. So just talking with them, it just seems like that's what's kind of lacking right now. Uh, I wouldn't fire Mitt Daniel. I think I would keep him another year, but you know, you got to do something because Chris, yeah, Chris Greer, I think he's had a bit of a long leash there. I mean, he was there when I was covering the team. Right. So, I mean, he essentially took over uh, all player personnel when Tannenbaum, Tannenbaum got fired there. It just necessarily hasn't always worked. He's made some good picks there. But in the end, it's about winning games and results. And the Dolphins have not won a playoff game since 2000. Crazy. I was in high school in 2000. <laughs> so it is time for them to win a playoff game. And if you're not, if that's not your goal, at least try to win a championship, which I think the Dolphins can do. And they're great. Like the organization is great in every single area, like off the field there. I think they do a lot of great things there in the community. Alumni, they take care of the alumni like yep. no other team in the NFL I've seen. But on the field, it's just been, you know, lacking. And I think you have, somebody has to be accountable for that. And I think it probably should be Chris Guerra. 
Yeah, at this point, you're probably right. And I think all Dolphin fans are siding with you on this one as well. Dolphins and Jets this week, not like the old Dolphins and Jet weeks, but we'll take it anyway. And it gives me a good excuse to text my buddy Antoine to come on here on Crancis Corner. Thanks, as always, for coming on. Have a great kind of weekend if you can, covering these two pretty crappy teams. But just have a good time in general. And uh, always love your stuff. Listen, New York Daily News, very happy to have you there. We're happy to have you there covering the Jets because – that's the only reason I would read about it if you're writing about it at that point. Oh, well. yeah. Well, I mean, I got to write about it anyway, but at least <laughs> at least I get to come down there and have a good time for the weekend and see old friends. So that's, right. that's kind of what I'm looking for. Not necessarily the game, although you right. know, I, it is football. So I hey, do enjoy that. You're covering football and you get to have Flanagan's when you come down here. So there's nothing exactly. wrong with that at that point. Antoine, thanks for your time as always. Thanks for coming on at Crancis Corner always. All right. Thank you. All right, special edition here, a uh, little Jets Dolphins, Crancis Corner here with Antoine Staley, Jets beat writer and columnist for the New York Daily News and my buddy for a long time. It's Dolphins Jet Weeks fan. It's Dolphins Jet Week fans. It's 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 a big week, or it used to be a big week, but we love covering here in Crancis Corner. We'll talk to you again next time. All right, sounds good.